whether we have a good, healthy habit. Habit. If not, we will learn from Dr. Gonzalez. So let's give her a big round of applause. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Can you see me properly? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm Dr. Gonzalez. I'm a licensed doctor from Mexico, and um, well, I worked in cruise ships as a physician for a few years. I got a training in Miami about aesthetic medicine, and then I looked further um, in my education, and I went back to Mexico, and I finished a master's degree in anti-aging medicine. Um, here, when I was invited to talk today, um, I decided to go into the whole team of Sanobi doctors and ask them which habits they will recommend to cultivate during this 2019. Do the event is called New Year, New You. I don't know if you heard about Sanobi. Has anyone here heard about Sanobi before? Yeah. Okay, that's great news. And for the ones who doesn't know about Sanobi, well, it's a medical institute and it's cutting edge. It's making a difference. Uh, we're trying to see a patient, each patient as a whole, not just as a physical body, but also as a, taking care of the mind, the soul, and the psychological well-being as well. So we're setting the standard for the rest of the medical um, hospitals around the world. Uh, later on, I'm gonna explain a little bit more of the specific areas and why it's different than any other hospital. So the doctors who work here, they do, some of them, they have a lot of knowledge. They work there for more than 15 years, and they've seen, with this approach of seeing a patient as a whole, um, they made some recommendations about what they notice we need to pay attention in our lives to avoid or, um, yeah, developing a disease or a problem, a health problem. Well, um, I don't know about yourself, but me, I struggle with some bad habits in my life before. As a doctor, I have a very busy schedule, and between patients, I forgot, for example, um, to drink water. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was struggling with that. I knew that I have to drink water, but I didn't have the time, I didn't set a pattern. So today, I wanna tell you a little bit more of what can we do for our brain to set up patterns and to improve our health, okay? So I do believe change is possible. For me, uh, I'm setting the example of drinking water for others is to do more exercise, to improve the relationships with their family or friends, or uh, to get a better job. It could be different options. So change can happen, and one of the uh, tools that we have to make changes is with the development a habit. Okay, so a habit, as Stephen Covey in the book of The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People mentioned, a habit needs to have three specific um, characteristics. First, there's to be some knowledge about this habit that we want to build. Then, we need to have the skills and the attitude. For example, a couple of years ago, when I wanted to incorporate drinking more water in my life, I had the knowledge. I know why I have to do it. As a doctor, I know if I don't drink enough water, the bad changes that happens in my body. Um, I had the attitude as well. I wanted to do it. But I didn't know how to set a pattern in my lifestyle to start drinking water. So it wasn't a habit until I read this book and it clicked. So I need to set a pattern to develop it. And I'm gonna talk about specific areas where we believe that we are, we need to make small changes to improve our lifestyle. And the first one is sleep. Sleep, it's been associated, poor sleep, with problems in our cardiovascular system, diabetes, even impairment in the emotional areas or cognitive areas. That is why it's so important and it's been um, big campaigns about having healthy sleep. Here in uh, the United States in 2014, well, every four years, they run a survey and uh, the CDC in 2014 analyzed the results of a study they run. Um, well, 444,000 people participated in this study and 
the results are quite overwhelming. Only 60% of the population of the United States is in the range of good sleep. A third of them, it's under the average time that we need to rest properly. And for a person from 18 years old to 60, the average time that we need to, the average hours that we need to have for good sleep is between seven and nine hours per day, per night. So then in this area, we need to start creating habits. And it's quite alarming because it um, is difficult for people who are taking care of areas where you need your brain to be at the fullest, right? For example, driving, um, bus drivers, or people that are taking care of machines. It's very important for them to be active. Or even ourselves as well, we cannot focus pretty well during the day. We don't do the, our best at work if we don't sleep properly. So here are some um, ideas of how can we improve. For example, caffeine, we recommend to avoid drinking caffeine around six hours before going to bed. Actually, caffeine, caffeine is not the best option for us to, to drink daily basis because all the um, functions and effects in our body. But if you're gonna do so, avoid drinking around six hours before going to bed. The same happens with nicotine because they, alter, um, they change our response. They keep us on edge. They keep our brain active. And then when we go to bed, we may fall asleep, but the quality of sleep is not the best. The same happens with alcohol. Alcohol, it can make us feel relaxed. That's why a lot of people drink a glass of wine before going to bed, and they feel like they help them to get into a sleep. But the quality of the sleep is not the best because we don't reach that um, the REM type of the sleep, which is the healthy one. Exercise. It's recommended to do it four hours before going to bed for the same reasons, because it keeps our body active. Another area that we can improve is noise. We're getting used to living in loud cities, a lot of loud noise in the streets, uh, or even in our own house, in our environment, everybody running around and not setting proper times. But one of the areas that I want to focus more is the screen time. Now these days, we're we have screens all around us. We have our cell phone, we have the TVs in the bedroom, we have iPads, tablets, and screens produce blue light. I don't know if you heard about this before, but the blue light affect our sleeping cycle. Even for blind people, there's a study that our eyes have receptors that as soon as we are in front of blue light, we cannot get into the sleeping cycle, which is quite interesting. It's, and now these days the technology is improving, and I don't know if you notice in your phones, now it tells you the screen time, isn't it? And it's a good tool for us to take advantage of, reduce the time that we spend in our computers. My phone, for example, has the ability to turn black and white, grayscale, and I just set the time, so I'm becoming aware of it when I feel it. I, I set a timer after 8 p.m., I shouldn't be on my phone, that's my rule. So I set it to turn it grayscale after 8 p.m., and as soon as I grab my phone and I see a black and white, it brings back the message of uh, you shouldn't be using the phone. So that's one of the tools that I want to share with you to, to get a better sleep at night. Um, another area of interest is exercise. We all know that we need to exercise in our lives, isn't it? It's good because it reduces the, the chances of cancer, diabetes, or even cardiovascular diseases. The problem is, I've been there as well, um, at the beginning of the year, you set a goal of doing exercise, and then around the half of the year, or later on, you realize you didn't follow that habit. And it's kind of disappointing. I felt disappointed because I didn't provide or give the time to exercise. But it's maybe because you are not exercising in the way that your body needs. Now these days we have genetic tests that can show which genes you have in your body and how your body responds better to what type of exercises. 
So that's great news. If you don't are like you're not a gene person, maybe it's because your body gets benefits from yoga or stretching more than hard lifting weights. Does it make sense? For example, now these days in, in, in this area is still in diapers, but there is this test, genetic test you can you can have performed, and they are gonna show you some genes. I put in a few of them, there are hundreds. For example, the ACA gene is related with endurance. The ACTN3 is related to speed. And this gene, for example, is in most of the Olympic sprinters is present, which it tell us something. You may are doing a um, it could be a good guide to tell you which type of exercise is better for your body. Make sense? Uh, another area that I want to encourage is self-care. Sometimes we take care about everybody else around us. Mothers take care about their children, fathers about their work and family, and or even if there's someone in the family which has an illness, we take care of that person and we forget about ourselves. So it's very important for us to have checkups um, every year. How many of you perform these annual checkups? See, it's, it's only a few of us and it's a reality. It's, we don't uh, set us ourselves as priority and that needs to change because now these days, the medicine has been um, growing so fast, there is a lot of tests out there now these days that it can tell us if we have the risk of developing certain diseases and not waiting until we have them and trying to do something about it. For example, at Sanovi, we perform one of the tests that is, as everybody knows, having high cholesterol, it's been, we've been tell, told that it's bad, right? Having high cholesterol can lead to a heart attack. But in Sanovi and some other places, there's this, this, a test that you can tell if the cholesterol that you have, even the, the one that we call bad one, which quantity of that it's really affecting your body and which is not. And that's great news because you don't have to wait until you have a heart attack to find out if you're at risk of it, right? and we can reduce the intake of medications as well. So I want you to pay close attention to that and analyze your life. Are you paying attention to yourself? Are you giving you, yourself the time? And for example, here in Sanovi, we have a program that is called Integrative Physical, which is beautiful because we see you as a whole. First, we run a lot of laboratory tests, x-rays if needed, ultrasounds, and we find out how your physical state is. But at the same time, you get assessment by a psychologist, a body-mind coach, a fitness, chiropractor, dental. So then we gather all together and we discuss your specific case, trying to find out how we can help you to restore your health or to maintain your health, depending where you are. Which is amazing. When I started working in San Aviv, I first I was, so impressed that I wanted to be a patient first, you know, because <laughs> everybody brainstorm about what's the best way that we can help this person. So this is pretty amazing and it's hard to find anywhere, anywhere else. Imagine this perfect hospital where you don't have to go to different clinics to get this assessment. It's everything in one place and all of them are communicating about your specific case. I think that's amazing and it's, that's why I love working there because it's leading towards how everybody should be treated as a patient. And well, here's the, the, all the assessments that you have. You have a medical, a, a doctor assigned to you, a nutritionist, a dentist, mind-body coach, a chiropractor, fitness instructor, and also we have bioenergetic a doctor who specializes in bioenergetic, um, which is amazing because he can tell us about the energies in, uh, in our body, how they are interconnected and how good we respond to stress. Um, everything clear so far? <laughs> now this area is pretty interesting. It's about mindfulness. And I divided it into areas. The first one is about being present. We always 
are overwhelmed by routine, daily life, and we forget uh, focusing the past or the future. And most of the time we're not present, we're not enjoying, we're always thinking of what I'm going to do tomorrow, or um, wondering if we could have done something better from the past. And this is very interesting because as I was reading about all of this, there's a lot of articles that talk about the power of breathing. And I would like you to invite you to breathe with me. There is two different types of breathing, one through the nose and the other one through the mouth, okay? So breathing from the nose brings a sense of relaxation to our body. When we breathe through the mouth, it prepares us for to be um, prepared for danger or to be, it produces um, catecholamines, which are the ones that we produce when we are in a danger situation or a stressful situation. So it kind of prepares your body to, to run or to do something to defend yourself. That is why most of the um, very, um, how do you say this? Uh, trainers or martial art um, experts, they train with uh, the mouth full of water, so they force themselves to breathe through the nose, to always keep this relaxation state. So I would like you to invite every one of you to breathe through your mouth, to, to get into this stage. So now everybody, breathe in. Breathe out. Again. And to not miss, not let the time pass by us, we have to be aware of what we're supposed to be doing. And, well, right now you're supposed to be listening, right? <laughs> but if you are concerned about what you're gonna make for dinner or about tomorrow's decisions, that is not being present. So every time that you're in a situation when you realize that, hmm, wait a second, I'm supposed to be do, working in this specific task, remember this. First, start breathing uh, through your nose. Remember what is the purpose of that moment, and then be a witness. Be a witness is seeing the situation from an outsider. And one of the best um, representations of this is in art. A lot of artists, imagine an artist right now, is working in a sculpture. Artists, they focus in each of the areas they are working on. For example, if the, the artist, if, if you bring back memories of seeing an artist working, you will remember they pay attention specifically in the area they are working at. For example, if they are making a sculpture and they are working on the shoulder, they are thinking of how they're gonna make that shoulder look good. Does it make sense? So not thinking as a whole, oh, I'm just doing a sculpture. It's paying a detail into each area. And let the rest go. So if you're thinking about, um, again, what you're gonna do for dinner or cooking, remember you're not gonna have this time back. So just leave that behind and then you worry later on. Make sense? And then that area is connected with peace and relief. When I asked the medical director for his advice for inhabit that he will recommend to cultivate this 2019, he recommended this, peace and relief. And while I was doing research about it, it's pretty interesting. It's basically at the end of our day, recalling everything we did since we woke up until we, now that we're going ready to go to bed. And think about all the good decisions that we made first, because the positive things always have to go first, okay? If you help someone else, there was a need, just remember that. In, think about it and if you were in the same situation would you do it again and, or, and later on the bad decisions because we are all humans and we make mistakes others can make bad decisions to us or ourselves we can make bad decisions to ourselves or to others and then look at the situation and be in peace with the decision that we made if we cannot do anything if we cannot change anything but for example let's say if i speak um, I was so stressed that I yelled to my kid, for example. Then don't wait until the next morning to kind of uh, apologize. Be aware of that. I did something wrong. It's, it's normal because we are humans. And then go and restore that relationship. Don't leave, 
let it set in your body because later on, well, we've seen this a lot in the hospital. A lot of emotional issues or trapped emotions later on causes these issues. So be aware of this. Even if someone else did something bad to you, you can even restore that or think maybe it's, it's, it, we cannot let others to be in charge of our happiness, basically. Um, and let it go. Uh, the beginning is going to be interesting to do the exercise at the end of the day, but then later on when it becomes a habit, you're going to do it right after the situation happens. And that's amazing because you don't have to wait until um, going to bed to recall the situation, so you can fix it right away. Let's say if you're at work and you yell at someone, then you will remember about this peace and relief. Is this what I really wanted? Is this the best way to go? If not, try to do something to change. So as you can see, these are very, very powerful areas that we need to, to work on. And the next one, well, we all heard about eating properly, right? Uh, we all know about the diets and we heard about all of this, but I wanna talk about a specific area that is called digestion relief. This is something that we, we implement in Sanovi. We all, all Thursdays are um, liquid day, let's call it our digestive relief. Basically, it's about giving one day per month um, pause to your gut. Because of all the food that we eat, and sometimes we eat in a hurry, we're, we don't eat all the time at home where we prepare our own foods, or the quality is not the best, is damaging our gut little by little. So by having a one day per month of relief, it's a pretty good idea. That day you only take shakes, you take uh, broths, you take liquids, so you let your gut to rest. Does it make sense? We have amazing results from this. People, they suffer a lot of constipation, bloatiness. This could be a good idea for you to add into your routine. If you have a specific condition like diabetes or high blood pressure, then it will be a good idea to talk to your doctor first or nutritionist so they make sure that you have the, the requirements needed, okay? And here I put a, uh, basically the, the team of nutrition shared this with me, which is the perfect shake. Every time that you make a shake, make sure that you have one cup of liquid. It could be water, coconut water. If you want, you can take a picture. I don't know if the quality is good, but the recommended is one cup of liquid. Um, rice milk, or even plain yogurt. If you're gonna use yogurt, add yogurt, half yogurt and half water, okay? Then one scoop of fruit. Berries are the most recommended ones. One scoop of protein powder, which is gonna give us around 15 to 20 uh, grams of protein. One tablespoon of oil, it could be coconut oil, even avocado oil, whichever oil you prepare. A cup of fiber, we use a Sanovi, the USANA FibreG as well. Uh, intestinal support in case if you have issues, intestinal issues, you can have um, unsweetened aloe vera juice, bone broth as well added, and a probiotic powder. We use USANA's of course, and we have amazing results. Uh, sorry, do you need, have you, take a picture already? Yeah? So I'm gonna change the slide now. So these are the five habits we recommend for you to start building up in this 2019. And as I mentioned before at the beginning of the talk, I was struggling with drinking water because of my busy lifestyle and sometimes I didn't have enough time between patients. So what I did, I, I read about this amazing article done by Dr. Tali Sherrod, and she explained to us tools to develop a habit. We know that we need to have knowledge to know why we want to do the habit. We need to have the attitude of wanting to do the habit and how to do it. So what I did, I divided the amount of water that I want to drink per day into three areas. So I start drinking water from eight in the morning to, to noon, four hours, 600 milliliters. And then 
from noon to four, another 600 milliliters. And then for four to eight, another 600 milliliters. And I reach my goal. That's how it started. And to start building a habit, we're social people. So what I did, I grabbed my best friend because you need someone else. So bring a partner on board. It could be a family member, your best friend, someone who shares the same vision and wants to add this habit. So what I did every time that I finish a bottle of water, I send an emoji to my best friend, right? Mm -hmm. So then we're kind of competing as, and, and then sometimes she sent me the emoji and I was like, oh, I haven't finished my bottle of water. So I start drinking the water. And at the end of the day, we have to have these three emojis basically. Um, so that's part of the immediate rewards, okay? Our brain works that way. We need to be rewarded in order to do something new, okay? So, in the last part, it's monitoring the progress. I kept a journal. For you, you can do it by, uh, I don't know, just keeping in there the messages of your friend, or you can do a journal as well. Here's an example of how we apply, how I apply, these tools to incentive my patients to be in control, diabetic patients. So I designed this report. Basically, I have a certain amount of patients in a study, and I tell them, well, this is the ideal control, this is where you are, and this is the average of uh, control that the rest of the group has. So it kind of creates a social incentive because you are part of a group and you are in a good position. And I'm telling them to this uh, example, you are 2.6 higher than the most controlled patients. So that patient now is, is excited to be in the control area. Now, the second part, immediate reward, I put emojis as well to keep them if they are in range, below range, or excellent range. And the last part, progress monitoring, I keep the last 12 months progress and every time they get the report they are excited and willing to do and go further well I think that's all from me I wanted to share a picture of our beautiful hospital there in Rosarito um, as I mentioned it's the best setting of a hospital it had the idea of the founder it was amazing to have everything together and see a patient not just a physical well-being, uh, it's more about a spiritual and psychological person. Um, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them at the end of the event. I'll be around and thank you for listening to me and I hope you bring something new home that you can work on for this 2019. Thank you so much, Paul, Dr. Gonzalez. Give us so much um, knowledge about having good health.